Isaiah 59. And let's look at verse 19. Verse 19, Isaiah 59, 19. It's nice to see you, RJ. <clears throat> Isaiah 59. Let's look at verse 19. <clears throat> it says, So shall they fear the name of the Most High from the west, and his glory from the rising of the sun, when the enemy shall come in like a flood. The Spirit of the Most High shall lift up a standard. I think it's interesting that the Geneva Bible says, that when the enemy comes in like a flood, that the spirit of the Most High shall chase him away. But this says, lift up a standard against him. And the Redeemer shall come to Zion, and unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob, says the Most High. As for me, this is my covenant with them, says the Most High, my spirit that is upon thee. And my words which I have put in thy mouth shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, seed, your grandchildren, says the Most High, from henceforth and forevermore. So, when the enemy comes in like a flood, and today I wanted to do something somewhat different, because I know that during this week, especially for Chris, <laughs> that the enemy has come in like a flood for him. And so I wanted him to share how he dealt with when the enemy came in like a flood. Because we, this is Shalom, <laughs> Shalom Shabbat, Shabbat, Shalom, Shalom Shabbat. Peace be with you on this Shabbat. So Chris, I know the enemy came in like a flood. So I want you to share with us how the spirit of the living, the living, the Ruach, the living God raised up a standard for you. Good morning. Um, I was trying to avoid being on camera because I'm wearing, a, I'm wearing something on my head because my hair is all messed up. But, it's okay. Um, we family. And um, I was sharing. So this week, um, I mean, it was just it's challenging with the students at school, and I think um, when you say like the enemy comes in like a flood, um, for me, I just find that it's just it's I'm trying. There's a lot of things that I um, just I'm trying to settle my heart. So, like, even the you know the big thing for me is right now the name, what's it, what to call the Most High, and um, sometimes I feel like the enemy would try to fight me in that area, and but I just try to stick with the word and I try to be in prayer, you know, um, mm -hmm. because and there's the scripture that kind of stayed in my mind this week in particular was the one that said, um, "You're troubled on every side, you're not distressed." Here. Um, I, I, I don't always misquote it, but the part that mm -hmm. says cast down but not destroyed. And, mm -hmm. you know, I just, I see how, um, in particular, just giving an example at my school, you know, I had uh, my, my fifth grade students, they had, there was a fight in the classroom. So, you know, that's typical that the kids will fight, but in fifth grade elementary school, it's not really, that's not a common thing, you know. Um, but the kids are very nasty to each other. They're um, very they nasty to each other. Yeah, they call each other like just horrible names, mm -hmm. um, using profanity, um, you know. And it seems like the the teachers as a whole don't have a handle on the kids at all. Like, you know, we're all just kind of scrambling as adults. I had, and then in my third grade class, I had another, a third grade student who pretty much had a meltdown, 
and just like was, you know, throwing attention. And, um, you know, I was able to keep the other kids calm, but um, this student in particular, he was, he was really just trying to get attention. And all I could see is that, you know, it was interesting too, this, this week, um, the scripture that came to my mind is, you know, forgive them for they know not what they're doing. And that was the scripture that the Most High brought to me because I found myself just getting, you know, angry with the, with the kids. Mm -hmm. And um, when that scripture came to me, it was, it was very, I thought it was very interesting that that would be um, the scripture, you know, um, forgive them for they know not what they're doing because they really don't know what they're doing. They're just yielding to spirits. But right, the spirits have taken over the children. That's why they have passed laws. The scripture says, spare the rod. Um, spoil the child. So if, you, if there's no consequences of pain for even us as adult actions, we we do any we are lawless. So yeah. what the enemy is trying to do is cause get, um, take away the rights of the parents from being able to discipline your children, so that the enemy, um, the spirits can take them over, and yeah. um, and just cause havoc. In their lives and in the lives of others. Yeah. I mean, I called the parent one time too, and to go to what you're saying, like I called the dad because I usually call the fathers first, mm -hmm. um, especially for the mainly for the boys. Mm -hmm. When I called the father, um, he's he's calling his son over. He's like, "All right, I want to talk to him. Sebastian, come over." And then um, um, he's he refusing. The son, he was just refusing, and then he took a chair and he started throwing it on the floor. Took a ball. So you had the parent to talk to the child in the class? Ooh. Right, so I called the parent to talk to the child, but uh -huh. the child refused to talk to his father. Yeah. And so at that point, it's just like, you know, I had, then another adult came in. He couldn't, he just stood there, big, a big guy, real big guy, black guy, and he just stood there watching the, you know, the boy telling him to pick up things, but, you know, he was wanting to destroy more, more things inside my class. and. So it it was I think I think I was I wasn't so much um, worn out from the ad, from dealing with the, the child because I feel you see those things every now and then mm -hmm. but I was feeling worn because um, like as adults we don't have a, they don't have an answer at all like it's just it's really bad because it's spiritual yes yeah, it's, it's, it's why it's spiritual and the enemy is 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 really interesting but turn to Second Corinthians chapter 4, which is quoting the scripture that you just quoted, and I think it's a good, um, a good scripture um, to share, which is what I wanted to do different today. Chapter 2, I'm sorry, chapter 4 of 2 Corinthians. This is powerful to me. It says in verse 7, it says, we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of the Most High and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted. Remember that word persecuted means to pursue you and chase you down with the purpose of inflicting pain and harm but not forsaken, cast down, but not destroyed. So we get cast down, we get <laughs> distressed, and all of these things, persecuted. It says, always bearing about in the body. That's the part we forget all the time. Always bearing about in the body the dying of Yahushua HaMashiach, that the life also of Christ might be made manifest in our body. This is the really most difficult part because you hear me say this often. We have not been taught how to do this because everything is name it and claim it in your best life now. And everything is about how you can get rich, how you can become famous. Because the enemy wants to praise and worship that shit belong to the Most High. He's got people conditioning as a believer in Christ. This should happen to you. And so when you get persecuted, like I said, for the purpose of inflicting, when the enemy is coming against you like a flood, when he's pursuing you and chasing you for the purpose of inflicting pain and harm, you don't know what to do with that. 
and you feel as though the Most High has forsaken you because you've been taught that you're supposed to, as a believer in Christ, because Christ went to the cross, we shouldn't suffer. He took our pain. He took our suffering from us. But this says that always bearing about in the body, the dying. How did he feel when he was dying on the cross? When he was nailed, that has to have been really painful. It says, I'm going to read it again. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus, the life also of Jesus, might be made manifest in our body. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Christ's sake, that the life also of Christ might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then death works in us, but life in you. The enemy is, is very angry because we are at a time when, when we are at the change of an age. We are at the change of an age. Things are changing. Um, it's not going to go back the way it used to be because the way it used to be was perverted and corrupt, but we didn't know it. Because we were brought up, especially those of us in the West, we were brought up to believe things that were lies, like Jeremiah um, 16 19, um, talking to the Gentiles, says, we, let's turn there quickly. Jeremiah 16. I had um, my husband and I met with an old friend yesterday, and he was telling us, <laughs> it was interesting, he was telling us how he doesn't read the Old Testament, he mostly reads the New Testament because he uh, understood about salvation is through Christ, and Christ came in the New Testament, but he said that he always got upset because he felt as a Gentile, he was a second class citizen. <laughs> And he didn't understand that. And so we were explaining to him that the melanated people, especially those of us who, who came from the South, especially because we were, we were the, from the tribe, mostly of the tribe of Judah, or we were at least one of the 12 tribes, and how we didn't understand who we were as melanated people, that we were the apple of God's eyes, and how the enemy stolen the identity of God's people and now the age is changing things are changing and the enemy is angry because he's been in control of the educational system of the financial system of all of the systems in the world and we were not even considered as being human especially I can speak that coming from the south and so now the enemy does not want to give up his power his authority his limelight and so um, in verse in Jeremiah 16, verse 19, it says, O Most High, my strength and my fortress and my refuge in the day of, of affliction. The Gentiles, now see the Gentiles now, is the, all of the curses and things that was on Israel is transferring over to the Gentiles. And they don't like it and they don't want it because they've been so conditioned to see us as being subhuman. It says, the day of affliction, the Gentiles shall come unto thee from the ends of the earth and shall say, surely our fathers have inherited lies, vanity, they are vain, <laughs> and things wherein there is no profit. So they have been, we, not just the Gentiles, but we too have inherited lies. We've been living and operating under lies. But the tide is changing. Things are shifting. And, and it doesn't feel good to the Gentiles and it doesn't feel good to those who are being forced to wake up because a spell has been cast on humanity at large. And now the veil is being lifted. And the enemy is angry because he doesn't want to lose control. He's been in power for a long time, deceiving people, manipulating people, corrupting people, destroying people. 
And so I'm saying all of this to say, especially to people like you, Chris, who um, are trying to be wa walking up righteously before the Most High and in the school system. Because the school system is one of the systems the enemy is, is using to pervert and corrupt the next generation. It's not like how it even was back in my day being in elementary school because I went to an elementary school where the teachers were melanated. And so they were trying to teach us. They could read scriptures to us. They could teach us the difference between right and wrong. They could, they didn't have to worry about sparing the rod. They could spank us. You know, you, you did wrong. You went to the um, principal's office and you got a whacking. <laughs> so you understood you needed to be right. And that was a good thing when melanated people were separated because we understood to be respectful of our parents and we understood to be respectful of authority and we understood how to be respectful of the Most High. But, the, but when the enemy was able to succeed at mixing us up, integrating us with other ethnicity of people, with that came spirits. And those spirits led us away from the Most High. And so those of us who want to be holy, who want to live righteously, we are under an attack. We are being persecuted. And so, but the scripture says, don't grow weary in well-doing. And I want to share a scripture in Zephaniah that I think is interesting. Chapter 3 of, of Zephaniah. The Most High loves his people. And the Most High keeps his promises. He keeps his word. He keeps his covenants. And he says that his children was not going to be obedient. And because they weren't going to be obedient, they were going to be taken as captives. But at the end of the time that he, he allotted for them to be in captivity, he was going to release them. And he was going to wake up those dry bones. And the enemy is angry because he don't want to lose control, but he don't have a choice. But what we need to do is, and you hear me say this almost every week after week after week, it is ultra important to examine your hearts. To not try to have one foot in the world and one foot in the kingdom because that's not going to work. The Most High say in Revelation chapter 3, if you are lukewarm, he's going to vomit or spew you out of his mouth. You either have to be all the way on his side or all the way on the enemy's side. You can't be, you can't have one foot in one side and one foot in the other because you're going to lose. And so you have to choose. And week after week the enemy is having me say to our group how important it is to not be a liar, to not be a thief, to not be a fornicator, to not be an adulterer, to be walking in holiness and righteousness and your best life is not now you you you're not here to see how rich and how famous you can get but you are here to be the temple and the house of the most high to represent him in holiness and righteousness and you need to be examining yourself and repenting for yourself and on behalf of your ancestors because the enemy is smarter than us but he's not smarter or mightier than the Most High. That's why it's important for us to live under the shadows of the Most High. According to his ways, his statutes and his commandments. Because I shared with you in Romans, he didn't do away with the laws. He just made a way for us not to have to sacrifice animals to be made right with him. But he still expects us to be respectful of his commands. Am I making sense to you? Okay, so in Zephaniah chapter 3, and let's look at verse, starting at verse 11. <clears throat> it says, In that day shall thou not be ashamed for all thy doings. Because we've been ashamed. They made us be ashamed of being melanated. They showed us um, Caucasian dolls as baby. That's what they were selling in the store. You didn't see melanated babies. They made everything about melanated people be ugly and bad. 
It says, but in that day shall thou not be ashamed for all thy doings, the things we've done wrong. They put us, locked us in rooms as teenagers back in, even before my time, and put us in a room naked and, and, and locked us in a room all weekend so that we would do corrupted and perverted things. They made us debauched in our way of thinking, wherein thou hast transgressed against me. But then I will take away out of the midst of thee them that rejoice in thy pride. Pride comes before, pride goes before a fall. So make sure that you deal with being prideful and idolatrous. Deal with it. Don't hide it. Don't cover it up. Ask for forgiveness. Seek the Most High to show you the ways where you're missing the mark. This is our time to be dealing with us, that we can make sure we are in the right place with the Most High, that He can use us, because the Scripture says we and Isaiah, we are His witnesses that He exists. Okay? And thou shalt no more be haughty because of my holy mountain. I will also leave in the midst of thee and afflicted and poor people, and they shall trust in the name of the Most High. The remnant of Israel shall not do iniquity, nor speak lies, neither shall a deceitful tongue be found in, the, in their mouth. Don't be a liar. God says he hates liars. If you find yourself saying something that you know is not true, in the midst of it, say, you know I'm not telling the truth, I'm sorry. This is the kind of mindset and heart set you have to have. For they shall feed and lie down, and none shall make them afraid. Sing, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O Israel. Be glad and rejoice with all the heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Most High has taken away thy judgments. The enemy don't want to hear this. The Most High is taking away thy judgments. He has cast out thine enemies. Remember, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the living God raises up a standard or chases him away, the Geneva Bible say. The king of Israel, even the Most High, is in the midst of thee. Thou shalt not see evil anymore. In that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear thou not, and to Zion, let not thine hands be slack. Don't be slack. And what it is you doing for, for the Most High. The Most High, thy Elohim, is in the midst of thee, is mighty. He will save, he will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. I, this is what I brought you here to see. I will gather them that are sorrowful for the solemn assembly who are of thee, to whom the reproach of it was a burden. Behold, at that time I will undo all, all that afflict thee, and I will save her that halteth, and gather her that was driven out, and I will get them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. Isn't this awesome? These are the verses of scripture that when we feel persecuted and afflicted and trodden down and lied upon and, and suffering all the things that we suffer, these are the types of scripture because God is not a man that he should lie, nor is he the son of man that he should ever need to repent. So we can trust that he's going to keep his promises and he's going to keep his word. I don't usually talk too much about prophecy and all the things that I see is taking in place about who we are as a people, that we are the apple of his eyes and how we've been deceived. But I'm saying to you today, I can see and feel all the various ways that the enemy is trying to bring destruction to God's people so that there would not be a remnant of people who are still having faith. Because when we think about having faith, we think about, you know, your works that you have to do. But faith is, I'm going to continue to stand and trust the Most High no matter what the enemy throws against me. Because you were looking at a person today, when I woke up this morning, I couldn't even stand up straight. And I kept on thinking and praying and thinking and praying. And I could see how the enemy through me was trying to defeat the Most High. And I said, no, not today, devil. 
not today. I'm going to stand strong in the Most High and in the power of His might. Even if I can't stand up straight, I can sit down. You hear what I'm saying? So when the enemy comes in like a flood, when you feel destroyed, when you feel defeated, when you feel despair, it's how you feel. But it's not necessarily your reality. And so that's when you have to have faith to say, I walk by faith and not by sight. I'm not going to be moved by how I feel today. I'm going to stand up. And I understand some days it's more difficult than others to rally. But I'm speaking this to you today so that the next time you feel defeated or you feel persecuted, that you hear my voice saying that we serve a mighty Elohim. The Most High say, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. We might feel cast down, but we are not forsaken. We are more than conquerors in Christ. Greater is the Ruach Kakadesh in us than he who's attacking us in this world. We have victory. And we're not leaving here until he's through with us. So today, Father, how can I please you? What is it that you're requiring of me that I haven't given you? Because I'm here to please you. I'm here to magnify you. I'm here to exalt you. It's not about me, but it's about you. I honor you. I treasure you. I don't need to be rich. I don't need to be famous. I just want you to be honored and worshipped and glorified. And that really is my heart. I just want you to be glorified, Most High. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercy. So let's read on. Verse 15. The Lord has taken away the judgment. He has cast out thine enemy. The King of Israel, even the Most High, is in the midst of thee. Thou shalt not see evil anymore. That's going to time when we come a time when we're not going to see evil anymore. In that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear thou not. And to Zion, let not thy hands be slack. The Most High thy God is in the midst of thee, is mighty. He will save, he will rejoice over thee with joy, he will rest in his love, he will joy over thee with singing. I will gather them that are sorrowful for the solemn assembly who are of thee, to whom the reproach of it was, was a burden. Behold, at that time I will undo all that afflict thee, and I will save her that halteth. And gather her that was driven out, and I will get them praise, fame, in every land where they have been put to shame. At that time I will bring you again, even in the time that I gather you. For I will make you a name and a praise among all people of the earth. When I turn back your captivity before your eyes, says the Most High, I will bring you back again. And turn away your captivity. These are the words the enemy does not want to hear. But these are the words the most high children needs to hear. So that you don't give up. There's going to time, come a time if it's not in my day it will be my great grandchildren's day. I don't know what day. I don't know how the most high is going to move because it's in his hands. But I trust him. And so what we have to do is. Tell our children these words if they're in a public school setting because the public school is teaching your children to trust in science as a God. Evolution, everything that is contrary to the word of the Most High. And it's up to us to live holy and to be righteous and to teach our children to have respect and honor for the Most High. If you watch the animations and the cartoons and the things, nothing is encouraging children to have honor and respect for the Most High. So be careful and cautious what you set your children in front of a video game or a cartoon or animation to, to pass away the time or keep them entertained. Because those are the, the, the devices that the enemy is using to sow seeds into your children. These things have spirits that's coming into your children that you can't see. This is why it's important for you to be a praying people. To protect your children. The enemy hates families. Families are under attack. 
any family that loves the most high and trying to protect your children through homeschooling or whatever you try to do to, to, to keep your children protected. The enemy is working really hard to stop and undermine this. This is why Chris and your family, and I'm, I'm sorry, and your classroom, the children doing peaceful time want to be in your class because there's something about the presence of the Lord there that they don't understand is there. So don't grow weary. Don't get discouraged. Keep on worshiping. Keep on fasting. Keep on praying because when you do those things, you can't see, but the enemy is able to see inside of you is the presence of the Spirit of the Most High. So don't grow weary. Rejoice when you're persecuted <laughs> because you know that the enemy is only coming against you because the enemy can see that the presence of the Most High is in you. Am I making sense to you? Let's turn to Isaiah 11. Hallelujah. Isaiah 11. Hallelujah. Isaiah 11. And let's look at verse 12. It says, And he shall set up an ensign for the nations, plural, and shall assemble the outcasts, plural, of Israel, and gather together the dispersed of Judah from where? The four corners of the earth. From the four corners of the earth. Isaiah eleven twelve. The Most High does never sleep nor slumber. The enemy is not able to do any more than what the Most High gives him. Um, leeway to do. So don't get discouraged. Don't shrink back. Do whatever you can do to draw closer to the Most High because he said if you draw near to him, he's going to draw near to you in James. So the opposite would be true. If you're not interested in drawing near to him, he's not drawing near to you. It requires action on your part. That's what the faith is. By faith, I'm going to seek the Most High. And I'm not going to worship Him with my lips and have my heart be far from Him. And you hear me tell you this week after week how important it is. I don't know how to reach you any more than what I'm, be, I'm pleading with you today. Please, don't play with the things of the Most High. Examine your hearts. Search yourself. Because we are living in some days, if you're not in the right relationship with the Most High, the enemy is going to take you out. It's those of us who belong to Him and is actively trying to live holy and righteously, that when the enemy comes in like a flood, that the Spirit of the living God raises up a standard or chases the enemy away. And that's what we need for Him to be able to change. We need to be living in a way that that the Most High takes pleasure out of chasing the enemy away from us. But it does require action on our part. We can't, when, when the enemy is coming against us, we can't lay down and say, woe is me. Because I'm a living witness today. My husband can testify of this. If I had given in to the way that the enemy was persecuting me today, I wouldn't be able to sit here today and encourage you not to quit. So the things that I'm telling you, I'm telling you from my own personal experiences. The Most High is real. And He's good. And He's mighty. And He's faithful. And He keeps His word. If we do our part, even when we're not doing our part, He does His part. Because He's not human. He's supernatural. He's mighty. And He loves us. But the enemy is trying really, really hard to take out the people who God loves. And so by us saying, no, not today, you're not going to have victory over me today. I belong to the Most High, and I know He loves me, and I know His words are true. So I am going to stand here today and give Him victory. 
he's going to have victory. Or I kept thinking in my heart, in my head, I kept hearing, if I, if I just lay down and give in to the way I feel, the enemy will have victory through me against the Most High. And I just say, no, not today. The enemy is not going to have victory through me against my Elohim. And so here I am today saying, God, Most High is a mighty Elohim. Don't quit. Don't shrink back. Don't give up. Keep on praying. Keep on worshiping. Keep on praising. And keep on walking by faith. We walk by faith, not by sight. Okay? Hallelujah.